Today I'm going to show you five easy ways to add shading to your stencil projects and make your DIY. One of the things that we have done with our packaging for our brushes, this is really new, I think within the last month or so, um, is we have made a color guide on the back of our packaging. So when you order the dome brushes, you're gonna get one of these cards in your brush pack and it is going to have your color theory. It has a ruler and it has, um, see we have centimeters, we have inches, and we have how to stencil, just a little tutorial right there with our website and then a value scale. The value scale is what I'm after today. So when you are base coating, when you're deciding on your colors and you want to add shading, shading is gonna add um, shape. So it's gonna make your edges, you usually shade at the edge of something and that makes the roundness start appearing and then when you highlight in the middle, it'll make something appear rounded or shaped, it gives it some vibrancy. Also, um, it gives it edges instead of it just being kind of flat looking. So it's a really nice way to make your paintings pop. So what we've got to do first is choose the right color to base with. So on our base coats, we usually choose the middle value. Okay, so the middle value is gonna be the one that um, is gonna be in between your highlight and your shadow. And your shadow is gonna be, and this is where we get out our little guide here, is gonna be two steps lighter or darker than your middle value. So whatever you've chosen, 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 um, chosen to base in, then you're going to choose two values lighter and two values darker. So in this case, if it was too close, let me see if I can find a too close color. I don't have a lot of repeat colors, so if I was in this one, if you squint your eyes at this, the color kind of disappears, and you can see that these are really close to the same value. This is a different intensity. This one has more white in it, so it's a toned blue. This one is a more vibrant blue, but that's a whole nother conversation to have a whole nother day. Anyway, so we skip to, so when you lay your paint against the the grayscale, this one is a value of, uh, let's see, my glasses were on my face, value of five. So then this guy right here is a value of all the way down to one, but what I'll do is I will mix a little bit of my blue in with the white because I didn't have a color that was dark enough. So if I needed a color, like if I wanted to, I could use a dark blue and mix a little bit into this color to make that be, um, to make that be a family color. When you mix colors together, they end up being family. Okay, lots of things to know about color. Do not feel like you have to get there all at once. I do wanna show you a tool that has helped me a lot. And that is a paint chip book. It's so old that it is completely falling apart. But I have taken all of the paints that I had in my possession and I put them on old business cards. So back in the day, I was a Delta girl. Um, I don't think they exist anymore, but I used the back of dead business cards and made put my paint chip on it. And then that is how you can see what your colors look like. And then I organize them by family. And it's interesting to note that I have bleach sand and eggshell over here in the green family. But if you look at them together with it, you can see that they are actually green. This is super handy to have dry chips of your paint colors also. You can see the ones that are transparent and the ones that base well. So it's super easy to tell. And then you could put different information on them. You could put their value. You could put um, any of that kind of stuff. Put your brand name if you have a bunch of brands. And then when you organize them by family, um, you will know which colors you want to pull out to shade and highlight. And you can lay them out together and make a plan. The first way that we're going to shade through our stencil is going to be with a jumbo dauber. Okay, so we are going to do the have a jumbo dauber and we're going to put out our shade color. We're not going to do highlights. It's a whole nother video. Okay, so what we do with this technique, I've already got this base coated. So I'm going to load just a little bit of the paint and I loaded it flat here on the palette. So you can see there's not a bunch of, if I loaded it wet, it would look like that. And so we don't want that. And I'm going to just blot that off nicely. Okay, now pick up some of that dry and then blot it off. Now I'm going to pick up just a side load of my blue and then I'm going to shade. 
And so I'll just guide the dark side of my blue around And if I need to blend, I can go ahead and just use the clean side or the blue side just to blend down anything that's not pretty. Okay, see how easy that is. Let's take a look at it off of project. That adds a totally different element to it. That is just so pretty. Number two technique is to corner load just the tip of your project. Let's get out. This guy right here. And you can go about this one just a couple of different ways. It's slightly different. It's about the same. You could do wet and wet like I just showed you. Um, but you could do a couple of different things with this. So I'm blot. So I've just worked that paint all over the tip right there. Just blah, 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 blah. I'm pushing on it to blend it and then blend it off. You give yourself just a teeny bit of a mist of water and then you could run, I'm going to blot it, run this right along the edge. So I'm just kind of dabbing it. And then that is my shade. So by adding just that little mist and blotting, you allow that color to kind of flow along and do a shading technique up there. Number three. Okay, so we're gonna use a sponge to get the edge of my mason jar shaded. And what I like to do is I like to take my sponge, get it completely in the water. I like to squeeze it all out, put it in a paper towel, and then step on it. It's the definition of foot pounds of pressure. Okay, we're gonna take number 74 for whatever this background is. <clears throat> by having a wet surface, by having a wet sponge, this is gonna make the, um, the misting unneeded. So we're gonna go into our paint, and our rub to blend it in, blot, and then we're gonna go on here And I'm just going to rub that along. Once I get it on there, I'm going to go with my clean side and just smooth everybody out to where I like it. Okay, And that is how you shade a large surface with a sponge. Number four, we're going to use a dome brush. We're going to use our stencil. We're going to use the dome brush. And that this one is an interesting one because this color is this color right here. So it's number six, nine, sorry. And I could go lean to the purple. I could lean to the red. I could mix the two. I could mix this with some black and it would be a toned color. So there's a couple paths you can take. Just depends on what appeals to you. I'm gonna go ahead and lean to the red. It's important that our dome brush is dry. So we're going to pick up the red. We're going to wipe off a lot. It's important that you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. All right, so we'll use our multi-masker. And then we're just going to go ahead and a dry rub. You don't want any water on this. So if that surface was still wet, we would want to dry that surface off. And there's how you shade using your dome brush. Number five, um, don't forget to stick around for the bonus and make sure if you find value in this content, make sure you give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when we have new content. We are always giving out new content. We are here to educate you and we care very much about your painting. Okay, so we're gonna take our brush, we're gonna wet it. Unlike the dome brushes, um, this one can be wet. I like to start with a little bit of a damp brush just because it helps load the paint. Um, water molecules are attracted to water molecules. So with this technique, what you can do is you can put your paint down. You can go wet and wet. So I can pick up just a corner load. So it's just side loaded. You can see both sides have a little bit of paint on it. Give it a little blend. 
and then I can go right into that color and I can walk it out as far as I want to walk it out. But that does a really good job of blending the colors. It sort of brush mixes in place. So it makes two colors that maybe don't go perfectly together, go perfectly together. And the bonus is we're going to shade on these leaves, but we're going to do it with a flat brush and no stencil. If you are new to using brushes, this one might be your, this is gonna be the most challenging. However, it's the one that you can add jazzy bits to all kinds of places, so it is one to practice and to, um, to go ahead and make it a goal, okay? So when you're floating, this is a floating technique or a shading technique, whichever way, that's the, the term that I grew up with was floating. The idea is, is that you have enough water in your brush so that the color that you put on the tip, on one tip, one color, um, will float in the water that's left behind by the clean side of your brush. So you have to keep one half of your brush clean and you have to blend to have this be a graduated color and the one is going to float away in the water that you leave behind. That's why it's a little bit more challenging. Okay, so we start with a wet brush. Okay, and I'm going to pinch out my water. And then what I like to do is I like to have a spot on my palette. If I squirt over and over again, my dots of water get bigger and bigger. Okay, so now what I can do is I can pick up whichever dot of water I think I need. So I'm going to just suck a dot of water up, maybe two. I'm going to blend just a little bit. I'm going to poke into the corner of my paint. So that's just that little teeny bit of paint on there. And then I'm going to blend it on a clean spot on my palette. And you'll see that it's already floating across. I stay in the same spot. It's about a one and a half inch long swath. Don't do big or you'll leave all your paint on your palette. And then if I need to, I can touch a wet spot on my paper towel just to blot any excess um, paint off. And then we're gonna be very controlled. We're gonna leave our paintbrush straight up and down. Well, slightly leaning, almost like a pencil. And then I'm just gonna kind of chop at that little area right there and then walk it out to where I think it needs to be. So I can reload, I can pick up one dot of water, reload my brush. I go blending in one direction. I'm not going back and forth, but I did go and scooch off some of the stuff on the other side, blot, and then we roll it along the edge. come around the circle and then blend it out. If you need to dot something, you can. Um, these There's a bunch of brushes and a bunch of sizes that are called mops. That's when you'd pull out a mop and you would um, just like kind of blot your stuff and then you can wipe it off on a paper towel. So then you go along and you just follow the shape. Reload your water and paint as needed. So that is a nice way that you can add a little bit. And if this is really nice when you just have one little spot that just needs a little something. It is so nice to have that control and be able to pull out the brush that'll do the trick. I hope that you enjoyed the five ways plus one bonus to add shading and make your DIY projects pop. If you like the content, make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell to be notified, and we'll see you in the next video.